Andy Wheatley on a Twitter just said, uh, the Tory party, what's the party of business? Now the party of sex offenders. Oh, burn. Now, something else you might have spotted and what Andy's referring to here is that Nadine Dorries, the former culture secretary, has a book out about how the entirety of the British establishment set itself against, let me just check this for a moment, yes, an old Etonian millionaire uh, to bring down Boris Johnson and his government and in the meantime deprive her of a peerage, which, of course, she really deserved. Now, some of what she's written, Dave, in her book, which has been serialised by another newspaper, um, has the ring of paranoid fantasy about it. But one revelation that is getting some traction and why Andy's referring to sex offenders is an assertion that she's made that the Tory party knew about alleged rapists in its parliamentary ranks and didn't report them to the police. What's going on exactly? What has she said? And is there any grounds for thinking there's something in it? Dave? I mean, right? oh. Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry, you cut out that. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is a uh, this is an incredibly difficult one. I mean, essentially what's happened here is Jake Berry, uh, who was for a brief period the Tory party chairman under uh, Liz Truss, Very has, uh, <clears throat> has written a letter to police saying that the uh, that there is an MP who hasn't been named. Uh, who may have up to five victims. He said that the he's alleged that the Tory party has served the victims poorly. Uh, and it's been alleged that it's uh, that the party itself has been paying for support that she's been receiving uh, as a result of what she has allegedly gone through. Uh, so yeah, I mean this is a this is an incredibly difficult one. I mean I'd stress that the people concerned in this haven't been named and are not uh, are not going to be named and obviously would urge against speculation on who the individuals are. Uh, but yes, we've, um, so yeah, this is uh, this is something like you say that Nadine Dorries has alleged in her book, uh, in a forthcoming book, uh, which contains all number of allegations about the way the Tory parties run. Uh, and like you say, another newspaper has uncovered the letter that was sent by Sir Jake, uh, in which he's very concerned about the way the party is claimed to have acted. Um, Yesterday, Oliver Dowden, the current Tory party chairman, has said, uh, sorry, the former uh, party chairman, uh, currently the deputy prime minister, has said that this isn't something that he was aware of that has happened under his watch. And he's denied that the Tory parties, that the Tory party acted improperly in this instance. Right. So we've got a situation then where Nadine has said something in her book, which is full of crazy stuff that lots of people don't quite buy. Um, but this particular one seems to be backed up by a letter that was written by a Tory chairman confirming that there is one MP who's been accused of perhaps five sexual assaults and that at least one of those victims has been having um, treatment of some sort, which has been funded by the Conservative Party, which implies that um, firstly they felt a duty of care towards her, perhaps uh, for whatever reason, and also that they may have believed her and that there was some evidence to think that uh, she was injured in some way afterwards, mentally or physically. So that something has happened and that yet nobody went to the police about it. Now, I imagine what's going to be happening now, because we've already had Jake Berry's letter, right? And Oliver Dowden was the chairman before him and he says he doesn't know anything about it and certainly didn't cover anything up. So now we're in a situation, I suppose, where journalists are going to be going to all the other chairmen of the party and the other whips and going, well, did you know about this? And did you know about this? And did you know about this? And seeking confirmations or denials and trying to piece together in what era this is supposed to have happened and, and which prime minister, I think we can all guess probably, it, it happened under. Um, so she's, one chairman's told the police there's evidence of a possible cover up. Previous chairman says, no, we're going through all the, the recent chairman seeking some evidence about things. Um, it's all a, whether there's something in it or not, and it, it seems to be that Jake Berry thought there was, we wouldn't have written the letter to the police in the first place. There does seem to be a whiff of truth about an awful lot of it. If nothing, even if the, the rape isn't true, the fact that the Tory party believed there was something seriously amiss does seem to be true. Um, what's the, I suppose the question is, you know, is Nadine right to say that um, the Conservative Party has a serious sex offender problem, or is that clutching at um, insults? I mean, I think we're 
a long way short. I mean, certainly there's allegations, uh, there's multiple allegations going around. Uh, there was another Conservative MP that was arrested uh, on suspicion of rape, which he denies last week. Uh, but um, yeah, I mean, I think we we need a lot more detail on this to uh, you know to be able to say anything definitively. I mean, you would hope that uh, you know any allegations are being followed up and are uh, you know are now being looked at. Yeah. Uh, but what the police response was to the letter from Sir Jake, we don't know. Well, exactly. We don't know if they did investigate anything. I mean, why, when and why did they get this letter and what did they do about it when they did get it? Something, presumably, one would have thought should have happened. Um, I mean, we've got here, I just had a quick look while you were speaking there, Dave, about a list of, um, list of sexual assault allegations about MPs. I thought and someone's listed these somewhere. And where am I tell? Here we go, The Guardian, right? So this is... Um, we have the Conservative MP for Wakefield, Imran Khan, found guilty uh, last year of sexually assaulting a 15-year-old boy. Neil Parrish, the Tory MP for Tiverton and Honiton, the tractor man, as people might know him. David Warburton, um, who had the whip removed for some reason frame, then later had a by-election, of course, was accused by various women of... Um, uh, having taking cocaine and, and groping and other things. The Tory MP for Dellen, Rob Roberts, um, was accused of an uh, independent investigation, found he had sexually harassed a junior member of staff. Andrew Griffiths, uh, a High Court judge, found that he had raped his wife while she was asleep and subjected her to coercive control. He's a Tory MP. Charlie Elphick, the Tory MP for Dover, convicted in jail for sexually assaulting two women. Uh, we've got a Labour MP in Hartlepool in July 2021, Mike Hill, a repeatedly sexually assaulted and harassed a parliamentary staff member. Uh, John Woodcock, another Labour MP, uh, suspended amid an investigation into claims he said inappropriate texts. Michael Fallon, a long time ago, this is now, this is going back, Defence Secretary in 2017, admitted his behaviour towards women had fallen short. I mean, I could go on. Um, and this this article that I'm reading, it's more than a year old. Right, there's been another list since then. Chris Pincher, goodness knows what else that's been happening. Is this problem? I mean, you, we work in Parliament. Is this an issue with Conservative MPs, or is this an issue with people who are MPs and they're in power and they they're not subject to managerial control and well, human resources issues in quite the same way as the rest of us? Yeah, I mean, I think the list you've just said, I mean, it spells out in pretty stark detail. There's, uh, you know, there's a cultural problem within the within Parliament itself. Uh, you know, I don't think I would limit it simply to MPs. I think there'll be, uh, you know, sort of there'll, there'll be issues around the culture more broadly in terms of staffers as well. But yeah, we're, uh, you know, we're, it's, there's obviously a massive problem. And, uh, you know, there's, there, you know, this needs to be looked at and dealt with. And, there are some really sort of very strong telling examples of uh, you know cases where this has occurred. Yeah, there needs to be obviously some kind of clean broom going in there and sorting out, so not just in in one party or another, but in Parliament generally, and making it impossible for some of these things to go unreported or to happen in the first place. Um, mm. Now, uh, one of the issues in that particular story is, for example, the, a victim of a different Tory sex scandal, <laughs> and it's difficult to get them all mixed up because there's quite a few, but the victim of a different scandal has been asked about the, the rape allegation scandal we've just had from Nadine and this letter to the police, and she has confirmed the ID of the Tory in the rape allegations uh, and says that he's the one she went to for help after her assault. Now, I, mean, the day, I suppose the question it has to be a bit like, um, you know, Nadine does seem to have accidentally hit on something here. Where does mm. this where does this go next, do you think? What is the Conservative Party going to have to do, about, if, if anything? I mean, do they care? Is there actually enough will within um, the Conservative Party to actually sort this out if she's, if she's made these allegations? Yeah, I mean, I think the sort of being in the eye of publicity now, it's going to be a lot more difficult to ignore this. I mean, I think there's the expectation now that this will be, uh, you know, that this will be followed up. And if there have been failings in the past, you know, they're sort of duty bound to look at it. Certainly to have reached the point where a former chairman would write to police about it, you know, you would expect that to be a very sobering moment for the party. Um, 
in terms of uh, you know the wider culture, I mean, I think it obviously shows that there's been there's been severe issues. People that have come forwards maybe haven't had the expectation they will be dealt with properly. Mm. And I think that culturally has got to be something, uh, you know, sort of for whichever party, you know, for all the parties across the board, it needs to be something that can't be allowed to happen going forward. Yeah, they need to have like a, you know, a, a box at least where you can put an issue in anonymously and say this person has a, you know, that there's somehow that things get investigated, that things get controlled. Leslie says, how many other scandals are going to come to light? We've got a year before the election, Leslie. We've got all the time in the world for more scandals. Isn't this a good reason for each MP to be police checked? Oh, good Lord. Um, if what, what about that? I mean, giving um, police record checks, some of these people just didn't have a record until they became an MP. And if it's mm. a cultural issue, I suppose they're that, you know, it's, it's something that may be enabled after you become an MP or a staff or you go into Parliament and start working the late hours in the bars and all the rest of it. Um, it's something that perhaps wouldn't show up in a police records check, isn't it? It's something that would happen later. Yeah after you go into Whitehall. So I think a records check, Leslie, is not not something that's necessarily going to pick it up. Personality check, maybe. Some kind of basic multiple choice morality quiz before they get to be an MP. Is this the right thing to do? Is this the wrong thing to do? Rape, not rape. Um, Julie says, Leslie, I totally agree. The sad thing is these MPs think they're above the law, but when thinking about it, they haven't had very good teachers in the past. No. Some of them are some of the finest teachers in the land, and they obviously weren't up to doing what um, most teachers would teach you to do, and they just they don't seem to have figured out how you do not behave. Oh, that you're likely to get caught out. You know, Westminster's full of journalists. Keep it in your pants, lads. Now, other bizarre allegations in Nadine's stories uh, include allegations that one MP had sex with a prostitute on a billiard table while watched by four others, uh, and there's a shadowy fixer in number 10 who brings down prime ministers who doesn't have a job title and isn't elected. Firstly... I mean, I'm thinking of some Tory MPs uh, and the thought of any one of them having sex with a prostitute on a billiard table while another four watch on is just really very ick. I can't I can't think of any of them that that would be like a good scenario. Um, and secondly, some of this other stuff is this. Does the, the fact there is a letter supporting the rape allegations, does that support some of the rest of Dean's book that she has done the work to make it? you know accurate or does the fact that some of this stuff seem a little bit bizarre and odd undermine the stuff that maybe there is some substantiation for? i mean i think nadine doris's book is going to be something that may be approached with caution somewhat i mean her record <laughs> was, uh, was uh was difficult um i say very diplomatically uh i mean I, I think, I mean, this This is all, the whole book that she's writing is based on the theory that there was a plot, uh, you know, with several high-powered people across Number 10 and presumably across various other organisations around Whitehall that were plotting to get rid of Boris Johnson. I mean, you know, the one person responsible for Boris Johnson's downfall was Boris Johnson. Mm. The whole premise of the book is, uh, you know, I think it's going to be finding things in the shadows that are people will be sceptical about uh you know sort of the the idea of the kind of shadowy figures in number 10 i mean i, I think we need to see more detail about what uh you know sort of what she's what she's implying and maybe who some of the individuals are how far she goes in actually identifying some of these people i know this would have been through a rigorous process of being yeah, i suspect it's been heavily lawyered and that's why there's probably less stuff in there than you might want um, and whether or not that stuff that got lawyered out would would have helped at all <laughs> or made things more difficult, who knows? Um, but it does, you know, this is the kind of, some of this has the tone, the same kind of stuff that we, the same sort of pitch of sort of paranoid fantasy that we saw with the Carl Beach allegations about, you know, Westminster child sex rings and things. They're just like, mm, there's, there's sort of half based on something, but then there's just, it doesn't seem to mostly be there. Now, Mike says, I'd put Dory's output in the same camp as Dominic Cummings, a small element of truth, or at least believability, in case there's an awful lot of total nonsense. Yeah, I think there's a nugget sometimes in some of it, but then there's so much madness packed around that nugget that it's very difficult to unpick it, and uh, you may not even find the nugget after a while. Finally then, Dave, before we move on to some, some good news, Nadine has clearly 
kissed her peerage goodbye. She's obviously come to terms with that and been through the grief process. Um, but where next for her? What is she going to do? I mean, she's not employable as a as a politician. She's probably employable as an after dinner speaker, but only up to a point. Uh, and I mean, obviously, she's a she's a fiction writer. She could carry on doing that, I suspect, and make plenty of money that way. What does she What does she want to do? Where does she want to go from here? Where is she going to go from here? I mean, she's ventured out into TV uh, presenting. She's got a show on Talk TV. Um, she's, I mean, I, I think she's, you know, she she she's got the recognition factor now. I suppose, sort of, from the combination of her book, from any future writing she does, from TV presenting. I mean, I guess she knows she's burned her bridges. There's no future in politics for her. Uh, the peerage is, like you say, obviously never going to happen. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think you know she's uh, you know she's retreated back to lick her wounds, but she's not going to go quietly. And I think we're going to see a lot more of Nadine Dorries. Oh dear. It is. <laughs> not what I wanted to hear. What a, what a terrible shame. Thought she was, there's me hoping she was going to go quiet, or at least just go to the airport mm -hmm. book stands where we could all happily ignore her. Um, Strictly come dancing, then maybe next year. Who knows? I think she's already done the jungle, isn't she? She won't be back in there again.